Last time I was here, we talked about love, right? And how God is love and what we need to do in the church and give a little more love. So, have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> I love you, church. Can I get some back? You. Do you mean it? Yeah. Don't say it if you don't mean it now. All right, so, a couple weeks ago, a pastor asked me to preach again. Don't know why. Uh, and uh, I was like, okay, God, so you told us to talk about love. So what would go with love? How do we show people your love more? And God replied to me, forgiveness, because it was my love that led me to forgive you for your transgressions so you could have life. And if I didn't forgive you, we wouldn't have this life, would we? Where would we be? So God forgave us for our, our trespasses. He loves us. Now, there's a the thing about forgiveness. See, a lot of people, when I was listening to the kids, see, kids don't hide the truth. They just tell it like it is. That's why we love kids so much. We wish we could be like them, all right? Because no one's going to yell at them for telling the truth. You know, they say, well, that's just a kid. But you heard some of them say, forgive but don't forget, right? Or walk away, shake hands, walk away, and let it be this and that. But people don't honestly know that it's been one of the things I heard while I was studying for this sermon was that I heard a, uh, a pastor say that forgiveness looks lovely till you have to do it. See, for, forgiveness is lovely, it's great, till you have to do it. Because then you have to go against a lot of times how we feel, especially since I heard Patrick talking about me. You know, he says I'm not as good as a drummer as I should be, and that I'm holding the band up, but he smiles at me every day. So it's not going to be that easy to forgive him. Brother Rick said hi to me this morning, and then I heard him mumble something. It's not going to be easy to forgive him, so... Forgiveness is cool, but I don't want to do it. Why? You hurt me. How many people are sitting here right now that are hurt by somebody? And you know that you, come on, and you know that you need to forgive somebody. Well, this is the holiest church I've ever been in. <laughs> let's say the benediction and let's go. <laughs> Y'all don't need no preaching. <laughs> Y'all that righteous, you don't, what am I standing up here for? Good, 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 good. I, Well, I'm the only sinner then. Because I'm going to tell you a story real quick. I don't have any pictures, so I'm going to tell another story, okay? I wasn't going to tell the story because I have to tell you about me. And I don't have skeletons in my closet. A couple uh, weeks ago, pastor preached about skeletons in the closet. I'm one of those dudes, if you ask me something, I will tell you. If you don't, even if you don't want to hear it, after you ask me something, you go, why did I ask? I didn't need to know all that. But a couple weeks, no, last week, while I was writing this, I was like, well, yeah, this is cool. And then my phone started ringing off the hook. And I don't answer the phone if I don't know the numbers. That's, and this number kept popping up. And they wouldn't stop calling. And then I heard a message on the house phone, it's your sister, please pick up. <laughs> now, by the way I said that, that tells you I didn't want to pick up, I didn't want to talk to her, right? She's not my favorite sister. My family's not tight like that. You know how some families, I love you, sister, and I'll do anything for you? No. <laughs> no. If you see me and my family, we, you might not even think we're family if you see us on the street. It might even, you know, or, it might not even be that. So she's kept calling, kept calling. Then my other sister called, and I'm like, well, this is the sister that's been like my mother. So I answered the phone, and she's like, she's coming in town, and I'm not going to let her stay with me, because now they had this big thing going. My mother's come down with dementia, and Patrick, actually, uh, one of the accidents my mother had while, she, while the dementia started forming, out of everybody in the world, Patrick ended up in a hospital room with my mother, down in D.C., and, uh, National Hospital, what is it? Uh, Washington Hospital Center. 
And I heard my mother was in the hospital, but I didn't have a chance to go there. Patrick comes in there and goes, is your mother sick? I said, yeah. Now that's how God worked. Because how everyone in the world, he comes and gives me firsthand that he saw my mother. She's okay. I'm like, wow. So there's this big thing going on between my two sisters. You know how sisters get. And the brothers stay out of it. <laughs> if you're a smart brother, you stay out of two sisters bickering. No matter if it's a drag out, beat up, you know. If you see punches, you walk. <laughs> you know. If it gets too loud, shut the door and walk. But don't stay there, because they're going to make you pick sides. So this sister, for some reason, thinks I'm her favorite brother. Growing up, all she did was try to hurt me. She tried to kill me. She even tried to burn my head. She had a hot spatula once cooking cookies. And I said, those cookies look good. She goes, do you want one? I said, sure. She had the spatula and <laughs> slung it in my forehead and held it there. <laughs> and I started smelling like a cookie. <laughs> it was burning. <laughs> now, you think that's not going to scar you for life. Oh, yes, it is. So <laughs> I said, I know she's not going to call and ask to stay with me. <laughs> uh -uh. So God in the back is going, what about forgiveness? Aren't you going to preach that? Aren't you going to give my word on forgiveness and you're going to get in front of people and act like you forgive and you really don't? So Saturday, my wife's birthday was on uh, Easter last week, so we took her to dinner on Saturday. And where we were eating is by this shopping place called uh, Wagman's. And uh, around the time that I was sitting at the table talking all this mess about my sister, my son sitting there, my wife, and they're just going, mm. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. And then I'm just going off, going off, going off. And then my wife goes, okay, we paid the check, let's go over to Wagman's. My wife walks into Wagman's, two seconds later, she calls your sister <laughs> and your, <laughs> and your, uh, your sister-in-law are here in Wagman's, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm looking around, I'm putting stuff on, I pull my hat down, got my glasses like, so I can't, you know, I'm going, oh, Lord. And then God's like, see, where, where, what are you talking about now? See how close it is to you? So then I started texting and I called, and then I was telling her the situations of this week and what's going on, and kind of work things out with her. Having completely came out and said that I forgive you, but I acknowledged it, and I did come to God and ask for forgiveness for the way I was acting. And I'm saying, okay, God, now I can preach this. Now, every time I thought I was going to be ready for this sermon this week, something came up where I had to stop and go, will you forgive me? Please forgive me. Thank you. Now, see, and then... I went to the scripture and I heard somebody say, it's not just the fact of saying that you forgive a person, but if you flip over in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, they're talk, they says that when you forgive a person, you should also comfort a person so they won't feel any way about it anymore, so it won't go against, you know, they won't walk away with a heavy attitude or it won't come back on them. I said, Lord, you want me to forgive a person and then comfort them? Do you know what they dragged me through? Do you know what they called me? It might be true, but they had no right to call me that. They don't know me like that. And you want me to comfort them? I'll tell you what I'll comfort them with, a left and a right. Here's the pill here's the, uh, the knockout drop, and here's the pillow. That's all I can comfort them with. I can't comfort a person and forgive them at the same time. But that's what scripture says. It goes further than just forgiving a person. See, with, when you hear people say, I forgive, but I don't forget, that's not God's type of forgiveness. Think about it. Me and we're the apostles sitting in front of the, the garden. Gethsemane, me and Patrick wake up from our nap because, you know, the apostles fell asleep on Jesus. So Jesus comes out and goes, man, Patrick, Bo, couldn't stay awake for me? 
No, I know, but what's going on? Well, tomorrow I got to go up to the cross and forgive all you, all you people, for all your transgressions. But what if he said, tomorrow I'm going, I'm supposed to go to the cross and forgive you for everything you've done against my father, which means you've done it against me, and I don't want to, because guess what? I remember what you said last week. Now you want me to get on the cross for you? Ha! Ha ha, you got another thing coming. Isn't that how we act? Oh no? I'm not getting on you, I'm, look, I'm in the same boat. I'm not getting on anybody, but if God's going up your street, let him come up. Now what if Jesus would have said, I can't get on the cross for these people, Father, because think of all the stuff they did to you. Think of what they called me. Think of what they're going to try to do to me. And you want me to forgive them? You're taking this love thing too far. You know, it's all right to be in the church, but, you know, when I get out on Sunday, that's about as much church as I need. All that forgiving that Brother Bobo's talking about and all that love stuff, that's cool if you're idealistic and, you know, not too far from being an ex-hippie. That's fine. I pay my tithes. I dress well. I speak to everybody. I speak to sister so-and-so. I speak to deacon so-and-so. I don't go to sleep on Pastor Jacob's sermons, so I'm a good enough Christian. That's as far as I'm going to go. That's it for me. And Brother Bobo had the nerve to sit up there and say, forgive? <laughs> forgive what? If I don't write that check this week, they won't be forgiving, will they? They won't be forgiving if I don't come next week, will they? That's our flesh, right? Is that how we're supposed to be? Uh-oh. I guess this would be the last time I preach, huh? Because I don't hear nobody agreeing with me. Okay? <laughs> Well, I ain't going to say, thank you. See, I didn't want to go, can I get an amen? Yeah, I didn't want to go that deep on them. <clears throat> but, but so think about it. God says when you forgive a person, you comfort a person. So you do have to forgive and forget, because that's exactly what Jesus did when he got on the cross. He didn't remember. He had amnesia when it came to your sins. Have you had amnesia when it comes to somebody hurting you? or transgressing against you, or doing something against you? How many of you are sitting in here right now knowing that you're kind of ticked off at somebody? Now, I'm not even just talking about the church. I'm talking about in life, period. How, you, some of you right now know that you need to go to God and ask for forgiveness and get right with him so you can get right with others. Because it doesn't work like that. You can't just go get right with other people and not get right with God. Because first, you've transgressed against God. You've sinned against God. So get right with him. Make your relationship right with God. Then go and make it right with other people, the people that you transgressed with. Now, that, that is a lot, isn't it? I'm kind of asking for too much. How many of you think that that's kind of asking for too much? It's going to hurt too much. Some of us feel like we've been wronged in here because simply... You might have spoke to me, and I walked right by you and didn't realize you spoke to me. I might have said something harshly and didn't know I said it harshly. My wife says all the time, you need to learn how to say things. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. If you're sitting there frowning and telling people you love them, they're not going to, I love you, brother. <laughs> brother Patrick, I love you with the love of the Lord. <laughs> I feel God all over me. I wish you felt like I did when it comes to God. Blessed be his holy name. So it took me time, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I deal with pain 24-7, and a lot of times I say things out of pain, and I'm learning to do this whole, okay, God, in season, out of season, no matter the pain, no matter what, I still have to represent you. That's one of the things that when you start when pastor asked me to preach a few times, he's like, well, how come you never, I'm like, because I know what it takes to preach, and I don't know if I can give you all that. I don't know if I can be real and get up there and preach, and I'm not going to get up here just to, to get a pat on the back and sound good. 
hopefully God is speaking through me and he has things he wants to say to your congregation. And if I'm not right, what kind of vessel am I pouring out to you guys? So I knew what it would take to come up here and preach. And the last time I preached, I was so nervous, I thought maybe the roof was going to come in. Because look, I repented all week. I went back a couple years. And then I went back some more and prayed, over, and prayed over stuff I already prayed for, just to be right. Just to ask God to forgive me so I can stand before my brothers and sisters. And, and last time I was here, I preached about loving. How many of you have actually put, put more love into what you do during the week? Ask God to love, let me love people more, to put people before me. I started feeling a little difference in the church. Not you? Oh, okay. <laughs> but if we start forgiving each other around this church, we stop dealing with things on just pride, and we stop doing things just to do them, but we're doing them because of the love of God. And when you have that love of God, it doesn't hurt you to say, I'm sorry. It doesn't hurt you to ask for forgiveness. It doesn't hurt you to comfort a person that you're forgiving, and vice versa. I don't even know why I had these notes up here. I don't even know why I wrote the sermon, you guys. I just try to go with what the Lord's telling me. Are you with me so far? Are we doing all right? Okay, so I might be back, huh? Amen, amen, amen. Oh. So where do we start? Where do we start with this forgiveness? See, I could have got a lot deeper with forgiveness, but let's take baby steps. I'm not here to get all deep on you and try to force you into things that you don't understand, but the scripture we read today is a perfect scripture to start with. Uh, you go to what, Matthew, uh, what is it, uh, Matthew? I wrote all these notes down. You know, Matthew 18, 21, 35. And then there's what, Matthew 14. And uh, there's so many scriptures. Go in your coordinates and look under scriptures that talk about forgiveness. And there's so many scriptures that it says, God forgives you. God will forgive you. Until God forgives you, once God forgives you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit. Once God forgives you, He'll put you where you need to be. Once you're right with your relationship with him, so many things can happen in your lives. But what does it take? It takes you to forgive. And some of us need to forgive ourselves. Some of us are just beating ourselves up and don't know why. So some of you, forgive yourselves. Go to God and ask for forgiveness. This is where we start today. Rick, how am I doing on time? Am I good? Okay. So I don't have to do any fillers or anything like that. I don't have to tap dance or anything like that. Don't dance. I can show you the belly. Oh, no. Okay. So where does it start? It starts here. Today we're not doing a communion. So let's do this. Just indulge me for a second. Let's start with us, with our relationship with God. Let us all bow our heads and close our eyes. Now, for anybody that's sitting out there that you know, you know that you need to get right with our Father. You need to get right with God today. And you need to ask God for forgiveness of your transgressions. And you need to say, God, I want to be right with you because I want to walk in your spirit. I want to walk in your love. I want to walk in your peace and your glory. And I want to forgive others. I don't want to walk around with this heavy feeling of frustration because... I don't know how to forgive. I know that you forgave me and gave me a whole new life, Father. And your word says, until I forgive others, when I forgive others, you forgive me. So, Father, I ask you right now, I'm going to ask you to forgive me. If that's you, if that is you, sorry, I have a drive. If that is you, please raise your hand. If you need God to forgive you right now where you sit, and all eyes closed and all heads bowed, this is a God moment. This is strictly about you and our Father, correcting your relationship with him. If that's you, please raise your hand so when we pray that you can acknowledge that you want God to forgive you 
for your transgressions right now. And you want to restore your relationship with him. You want to move forward. I think Emmanuel's is in a place where we can move forward in the spirit. And then we can just all walk in the spirit, all they choose to. And watch what God does. It's going to be an overflow of his mercy coming in here. Because the word says that he'll bless you with the, riches, the richness of his mercy. That's, man, I can't even describe what the richness of his mercy means. But that's what we need here at Emmanuel's. And God is trying to do that now. And if that's you and you, that's you and you need God to just straighten, that you need to straighten your relationship up with God right now, this is going to be our communion today. Please raise your hand and let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you've forgiven us and that you've given us a new life. You've given us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a 70 times 70 chance in forgiveness. You say you'll never get tired of forgiving me, but I have to acknowledge, acknowledge you, Father God. I have to acknowledge that you're the only one that can wash away my sins. Your blood is the only thing that can clean the slate. And I thank you, I thank you for that blood. And Father, I ask you right now, as I sit here amongst my brothers and sisters, that you clean me, that you heal me, and that you restore my relationship with you, Father. I want to walk in love with you. I want to forgive my brothers and sisters after this service. I want to pick up the phone and tell someone I love them, you know, and ask for, ask for forgiveness or give someone some forgiveness. I want to do that with a clean slate, Father God. And I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How does everyone feel? For some of you that prayed, don't you feel good? Don't you feel like something came over you? Don't say it if it hasn't. Man, this is the holiest church I've ever been in. I need to find a church where sinners go. Because y'all don't need me here. Well, you just using me for my drumming. Played so hard today, I'm, I can't believe I'm preaching. Now, we need to walk in forgiveness every day. Why? I'm going to leave you with this. We need to walk in forgiveness every day because what? We, we walk amongst broken people. We're broken people. We need to know that we're all broken and we need to be forgiven. So we need to walk in this. Amen?